Hall of Famer Bill Walton, it is a pleasure. I'm taking UConn in the women's bracket. Yeah, oh, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. I'm going out on the limb. Right oh, here. yeah. Okay. There My we go. My buddies right here, mm -hmm. Skip and Stephen A. Boy, yes. So, hey, I tell hey, you, let's go see. Yes, let's, yes. Do, let's do it. Welcome back. And real I'm, quick, speaking of back, your back is My doing back is fantastic. Great. My, my spine surgery was seven years, six weeks, and three days ago. And it's phenomenal. Good. I have zero pain. I take no medication. This was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I still work it. I'm in the pool, in the weight room, and then I'm on my bicycle. My bike pulls it all together, but I just keep going. As long as I'm able to keep moving, I'm doing fine. So You, you look wow. great. Amazing. I, I feel fantastic. I'm 63 years old now. I've had 37 orthopedic operations. Both my ankles are fused. I ground them up into dust. I now have a new knee going on three years with that, but the new spine. And the, you know, the spine is the foundation. It's everything, and it doesn't hurt. So what more could you ask Way for? to go. Congratulations. You know, I never thought all these years that I've been with you, going way, way back with way back. you. This is a youngster right <laughs> here. <laughs> but to be all these years, I never thought that I would be healthy because you guys have seen me mm -hmm. limp around, bend over, yeah. can't think, can't come. Well, you couldn't work anymore. Can't, couldn't yeah. dream, couldn't uh -huh. anticipate, yeah. couldn't speak. But now I'm healthy again. So I, I, I never thought I would be healthy, and I never thought that I'd be happy in love. Wow. And so Lori, just the angel of mercy, she saved my life and... The sad thing is, was when I was getting fired and going through all the horrendous, life-changing, life-threatening problems, I told her to go. Mm. I told her to leave, get out while the getting's good. Mm. But she stayed, and which is unbelievable. So when I'm lying there on that floor and I'm just starting to climb back up, I said three things. Every day, I'm going to tell my wife how much I love her and how much I appreciate her. Number two, I'm not going to suffer fools and nonsense anymore. And then number three, I'm never going to wear a tie again for the rest <laughs> of my life. I love and it. And I've stayed true Beautiful. to all three of those yeah. things. And you deserve it all. So that leads I us. don't deserve it, Molly, but I'm you not going to turn it down. Okay, would, enjoy it. Would you it. mind if I ask a quick no, question just while we're on yeah. his personal stuff? Yeah. Just real quick. Sure. Take I, your time. I have known you for a long time. Yes, we have, Skip. There's one thing that bothers me about your... The, the way people perceive you, especially our younger viewers. They know you as this outrageous, outlandish commentator prone to say things that are not of our universe, right? Like, like way out there things. And I've known you to be deep, philosophical, with, with real substance to you. Do, how much, if any, are you concerned about that new Walton image of yours as the, the crazy guy? It's not about the image. It's about me. This is who I am. And... I love a good time, I love the fun, but I also love the thought, and I love the, the mental challenge of trying to do the right thing on a constant basis. Now, nobody, Skip, has made more mistakes in life than I have. I mean, I've failed, I have just done the wrong thing, but none of those errors and mistakes were by choice. At the time, I always thought they were the right thing. Like, I, I thought challenging Wooden, I thought doing all John that Wooden, stuff. John Wooden, your coach at UCLA. Right. Yeah. I, I, I thought that was, that was all the right thing. Then I realized after I graduated and I joined the NBA that how fantastic this guy was. So after that, when I, when I realized all these mistakes, that I would go back and I would apologize and I would then try to make amends for all those things. And that's why when I uh, said my final goodbye to Coach Wooden, the first words out of my mouth were, I'm sorry, Coach. Good for you. Sorry. You know, one Make of the things work. I want yeah. to say yeah, yeah, real quick, sure. um, <clears throat> you know, I don't go back as far as you guys <clears throat> do, but he and I go back. We <clears throat> did NBA shoot around together <clears throat> for a year as well. And um, it was always an honor because I think that, you know, I never found what he said to be out outrageous. I found what he said to be from the heart based on what he saw. And, you know, I always consider him to be incredibly fair minded. He was just honest about what he saw. What he felt, you disagree, you better know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Otherwise, you were going to get schooled. So I just wanted well to said. say it was, honored to, it, was honored to work, it was an honor to work with you. I'm the lucky one because I learned so much. And you guys who can sit here all day, every day, and just let it flow and let it grow and just, oh, my gosh. I'm a lifelong stutterer. You guys know that Skip and I, Skip was there when I couldn't speak at all. And he would try to interview me. And it was just so painful and so brutal. Now, 
Athletics and academics were always the easiest part of my life. Health, orthopedic health, and learning how to talk, those were my biggest challenges. I'm a lifelong stutterer, could not say a word until I was 28, and it's still a challenge. I work on it on a constant basis. And so when I see you guys just going back and forth, and I, see Stephen, I see Stephen A. down there in San Antonio on Sunday or Saturday night, and he's going on for two hours after the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, oh my gosh, uh, how do they do that? And, and that ability, because I, I watch these phenomenal athletes. I, I'm a huge sports fan. I, I'm a fan of greatness. I'm a fan of, of, of of, of spirituality, I'm a fan of strength, I'm a fan of, of being able to perform on stage and, and, and to watch what you guys do in terms of just bringing it all together, to be able to have your mouth and your brain synced up at the same time. Please, somebody help me. Mm. Somebody save me from myself here. Such special talents. It, it's, they're, they're another level. Oh. Bill, oh. And you, they you, get you... at it. Oh, yes, they, they do. Just, they I, do. And I'm the way they that. tie it all together, I'm, it's ridiculous. I'm standing outside in the next building, yeah. and I can hear Stephen A. yelling. Of course you can. He's the best. Actually, I wasn't yelling. It was, it was he was, him. He was just <laughs> making a point. It was him. It was Bill, I, wanna, I, I, wanna I, focus have, on... I have very good ears. <laughs> Bill, I want to focus on yes, you, though. You talked about everything that you went through, and you're in this wonderful chapter right now. We're so happy for you. You have this book called Back from the Dead. What's it about? Why did you decide to write it? It's a compilation of a lot of the stories in my life that have changed me across the, the board. I've been chasing this down. I've been on the road since I was 17. Growing up in San Diego, I still live in my hometown, just 10 minutes from where my mom still lives in the, in the very same house. And so all these different people, I had the chance and the privilege to get to meet. My heroes in athletics, mm -hmm. Bill Russell, Muhammad Ali. In uh, politics, social issues, Bobby Kennedy, Sergeant Shriver, Martin Luther King. And then the, mu the musical heroes, the Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, John Lennon, John Fogarty, The Eagles, The Rolling Stones, Bruce Springsteen, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, oh and just gosh. all these guys who I still see. I, I, I just got to see Bruce Springsteen a week ago in Los Angeles on the River Tour. And what, what just kept coming back, I mean, it was a very emotional concert for me, as music is, when we had just lost our dog. and. And, it was, and I've been sick as can be for four months, well, four weeks with a bronchial flu. And so here I was not feeling well, but Springsteen was just laying it out and 66 years old and just delivering. And the message that he delivers of hope, that there's a chance. And as we see Craig Sager going through his battles yep. and the battles that I've had and, and, and that sense that there is a chance and in life, my dream was to be a part of something special, but while I was part of three of the greatest teams ever, I also spent six years on the Clippers. And so the difference and the, and, and the leadership requirements to have a championship show, championship program, championship team. And so this whole time, with the tears streaming down my cheeks at this Springsteen concert, everybody is dancing and yelling and screaming for hours and hours and hours. I just kept thinking, saying to myself how lucky I am to have this chance one more time. Because it was eight years ago, two, February of 2008, when Steve and A were on the air every day together right here on this ESPN campus. When I would come in and I'd see Skip and he'd be coming out of the gym and he'd just be flexing <laughs> and buffing and he'd just be, oh my gosh. And I'm just going down, down, down. And I thought it was over. Mm. And I had nothing and I lost everything. And I got fired and I lost my insurance, my income. We almost lost our home and it was just a devastating experience. And then, and then I got better and now I'm here. And so while I was lying there, you know, and listening to you guys argue and fight every day. <laughs> and thank God they put the subtitles on there so that I could <laughs> keep track of where it was going. But then I just said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? And to be able to come back, it's my first time here since February, 8, February of 2008. And so, man, and, and how fantastic it looks. And they got a great new hotel right nearby. Yeah. So it's, uh, wow, big time. Things have changed. A yeah, couple of things. Number one, as an aside. I think, speaking on behalf of all of us, our thoughts and prayers are with Craig Sager. Oh, yep. yes. We wish him nothing. We love you, buddy, and wishing you nothing but the best. Um, you, this year, what was it like watching your son, Luke Walton, 
head coach for the Golden State Warriors for 43 games, leading them to 24-0 and then 39-4 and overall. What was that like for you? There's nothing like the pride of a dad. I was very young, 23, when we had our first child. We have four children now, seven grandchildren, and more with every time the phone rings. <laughs> but I was so young, and I just didn't know, and I wasn't able to be there all the time. Now, I had the greatest dad ever, and he was so proud of me, even though he has no interest in sports. He, I never shot a basket with my dad. I, uh, and he, he just was not into sports as a participant or as a spectator, but he loved life and he loved music and he loved people. My dad, he, he loved literature. And he, he came back from World War II and spent the rest of his life trying to convince people to get along. And so and I, I had a great relationship with my dad all the way to the end. He died about 13 years ago. I was there uh, when he died, he died in my arms. But, you know, I let my dad down. He wanted, I'm William Theodore Walton III, he wanted a fourth, mm -hmm. and I didn't know enough to listen to my dad. The same way I didn't know enough to listen to Coach Wooden. And so, here I was, now 63, with four children of our own. Luke is 36, Adam is 40, Nate's 38, Chris is 34. And they wanted more from their dad, and I just wasn't able to be there to give that to him because I was out working and chasing my dream the whole time. And so now that I am at this age where hopefully I've learned tolerance, patience, perspective, and relativity, I've got that sense, that understanding of what it means to try to be a, a, a better dad. And so when I saw Luke out there and this great opportunity that he had, because Luke, who's named after Maurice Lucas, the greatest teammate that uh. I've ever had, just so tough, so fierce, and who was always there to help protect little Luke. He, his life, to have Greg Lee, our point guard at UCLA, be his young childhood coach, to have Jim Tomey, a Hall of Fame high school coach in San Diego, Lou Olson, a Hall of Fame coach at Arizona, yep. and then to play for Phil Jackson for wow. nine and a half years. And that very first game at Staples Center for Luke, Lori and I go, and we're sitting there, and I put on a tie-dye, gold tie-dye t-shirt, right? <laughs> and I'm a blazer, I'm a Bruin, I'm a Celtic, right? So, uh, and I'm there, and we're sitting in the back a little bit, and we're clapping, and, and Luke comes in, little Luke, Phil puts him in. And the very first time at Staples Center, they're three-time defending champions. The place is going crazy. They just add Carl Malone. They just add Gary Payton. And it's just absolutely incredible, the atmosphere, the excitement, the future anticipation for the Laker Nation. And all of a sudden, Luke comes down on the fast break in the middle of the court. And he looks off Kobe on the right. And he looks off Gary Payton on the left. And then he takes one dribble to his left and without looking, drops it back blind to Carl Malone, who comes thundering down the lane and just throws it down and gets fouled. The place at Staples goes crazy. And I'm sitting back in my seat just clapping politely as a proud dad. And I tap on the shoulder. And it's James Worthy. And James Worthy goes, I've seen it all. You in Staples Center in a gold tie-dye t-shirt cheering for the Lakers and Carl Malone. What has this world come to? That's it. Yeah, but the, the pride of a dad. Right. And to see the way this team plays. I love the Warriors. They are so fun, so exciting. The way they move the ball, the way they're in shape, they play selflessly. And at the end of the day, as with every championship team, you have to have the best player. And they've got him. We're going to take a, a quick a really break. Long limb Bill is staying put. I love it. Stick with UConn. More first take with Bill Wallen after the break.